Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another segment of Straight Talk, <clears throat> excuse me, with Grover Thornton. This show is designed to inform, inspire, and educate you on how governments, state, local, and national, impact our lives. Well, as usual, I want to start with a few things that affect us as a nation. And then we'll move into really Black History Month. This is an outstanding month that we all, as African Americans, should be proud of. And we'll be talking about that later on in the show. And we'll be showing you some outstanding people who, local and national people, who have had an impact on the lives of all of us for the advancement of our race of people. I often think of us as a people. I think of uh, the Israelites being in Egypt so many years. I think four years and 400 years and God delivered them with the help of Moses as his ambassador to free the people from bondage and slavery. So tonight I want to say a few things about our nation first on the national news and that is about uh, number one, I'd like to talk a minute or two about the President's State of the Union address. Um, it was very fantastic. Um, of course, the Republicans, they find all kind of fault with the man, but I don't see how they could. Uh, they're like a ship drowning, and they reach for everything they can to try to keep it afloat. Uh, the man really laid down his, down, his, down, down the garment when he talked about how they want to damage and change uh, Social Security. And I, I can't understand why they lie so much. They are the bunch of lying people I've ever saw. Those Republicans, the man stood right there and read from a pamphlet that 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 that, that, that uh, the senator from Florida said in, in, in this pamphlet that he wants to uh, do Social Security, re review it every five years, cut it down. Then he had another man that was talking about Oh, Social Security want to do away with it. Social Security uh, is it, it, backed up by the business people, but that's money that people work for and labor for all their lives. If they took every dime that I put into Social Security, never let me touch it until 65 years old from the time I went working in a grocery store when I was about 17 years old after school, I'll have more money than I know what to do with it because the money would draw interest and would be compounded interest. But you put that money in the trust fund, the government trust fund, and Social Security trust fund, and the government used it. And now it's time for, for, for us to have it. They got to do anything about it. No, they, they, they're not going to get rid of Social Security. But now he called them on the carpet the other night, and they had to stand up and say they're not going to do away with Social Security. But I want you to know, if you went back and read the history, in 1933, and when it was, it was in the 30s for sure, when President Roosevelt had to take over this country when we had a Great Depression. Uh, we'll talk about that sometime, not tonight, about how bad it was in America when the Depression people lost their money, jumping out of buildings, killing themselves and everything else. And Roosevelt created jobs. And Roosevelt ran, the, uh, ran for president three consecutive times, uh, 12 years before he died, and he died. But that's why they quickly passed the law that the president could only serve one time and, 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 and after the first initial time, he can run one time and after four years, he got to get out. So the fact of the matter is simply this, they did, the business people did not want Social Security. That's unbelievable. The man talked about 55 co companies had a gross income of $40 billion. Think about it. 55 corporations, $40 billion Revenue, pay not a dime in taxes, not a dime. Not a dime in taxes they paid. I can see why Jesus says, easy for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom. That don't mean that we have a lot of great, great people, rich folk. They've done a lot of things for, for poor people. But I wanted to talk about that and, and, and the State of the Union address now they're trying to talk about his age. Uh, it's not the age, it's, it's what's upstairs. I'm going on 90 years old and I have a good mind for, for rec recollection. 
and, and, and control of my faculties. So they does not mean that they maybe the man never threw his life away. But I like to say this, if he runs for president, I just don't want that thug to run for president again. He ought to be in jail, that Trump. That's where he ought to be. He ought to be in jail. I, I can't understand this country. A lot of man plotted to overturn the government. If I don't know when we go sit in the lecture was stolen and so many people bought into that big lie. He told the people to go to the Capitol. They did everything you can to bust up the windows. I'm watching TV one night after the six. Later in that night, they didn't show all the pictures during the day. They broke up furniture all in the place. They tore furniture. Thugs. He, then he told people to go to the White House. You have a jam time. Then he sat in the dining room in the White House. But all that went on for almost two years, two hours, I'm sorry. Ten of the country. Police officers protecting the Capitol. Several of them were dead, beat to death with the flag, committed suicide. Some of them lost their, their children lost their fathers. Now they were without their fathers. And now this man talking about running for president. I don't understand this country. <laughs> I bet mean, Obama couldn't do it. He'd have been in jail. That's where he needs to be. And say he's running for president again. That, and that's what I can't understand. And nobody wants to come out in the Republican Party and really challenge him. Now that now, now, now they talk about and subpoena fence to come into the to, to, to the Justice Department for questioning. I can't understand this country sometimes. A man like that should be in jail. The next time we'll talk about doing this speech so the Heckerton and the, the, the you're the liar. That, that woman, Marjorie Green Taylor, that, that's an ignorant woman. That is one ignorant woman calling a liar. You lie, you lie, you liar, you liar. Something's wrong with her. She has a mental problem. She has a mental problem. You should respect the presidency office. You don't have to agree with what he says if you don't agree with it, but there's a medium for you to express your views. Let the man speak in, in, in dignity and listen. Let the man in Obama's PC holler about you lie. They have no training, no respect. And, I, and Mr. Pelosi, as much as I think about her, one of the jobs she did, one of the best speakers in the history of the country, she took Trump's speech that day. That's not right. That was, that was rude. Special views after the man finished speaking. Give him the respect, respect the office of the presidency. That's my viewers. Now, on this uh, uh, balloon business going on, now, the Republicans first start criticizing the man. What do you want to do? Shoot it down, fly it over Montana? Well, shoot it down, let it fall in the, in the neighborhood, kill people? The same thing with biggest three or four football fields. The first one they shot out of the air. But the Pentagon and the generals who, who we depend upon, their views, they have training. In the U.S. military academies and stuff like that, they advise the president to let it get over water. And they shot it down. I need to collect the the pieces to put it together, see what kind of uh, information that they were trying to secure. But the fact of the matter is, if he'd have shot it down and fell down on a housing project, he'll be first in the Republican seat, should have known better. Ooh, Lord have mercy. But anyway, I you know, wanted to talk about those two or three things before we really got into, uh, this is the history month, black history. And I want, I, I wish that I could talk to every young child. You know, uh, they're trying not to get rid of uh, black history in, in the school system. It's like that DeSantis man, that governor, something wrong with him. Something's wrong with that man. They're talking about wanting to be president. Who wants, to, who wants a, a, a racist man to be president? Start off being president, a, a racist. He does not want, like a man called me one day and he said, this is Mr. Thornton. I said, it is. What can I do for you? And he, he started talking and starting, you know, we we having all kinds of problems in this country. I said, you can say that again. And he said, um, right now, take for instance, this, this uh, critical race theory. I said, what about it? Oh, uh, you know, I said, wait a minute, don't you respond, let me respond. You white people do not want the white children to know how, how what a savage you, you, you were and how you treated black people. You want to whitewash it. You can't white, whitewash history. That has to be history. At least the country did have enough sense in the man on um, 
Mr. Roosevelt, uh, Mr. Mr. Lincoln, in God's own time, you thought God going to let us stay slaves forever? This is God's world. The Egyptians thought, that, thought, thought the Israelites would be in there forever, but they soon find out. So I say to him, that is why y'all are worried about critical race theory. Now, we're in the midst of February, known as Black History Month. Originally, it was Black History Week, and it was started by um, a professor at Howard University, Carter G. Woodson. Uh, he was a, a, a professor of history at Howard University, and he had the vision to start uh, Black History Week. And it went on since 1967, I think it's 67, that it has been um, designated by all the presidents to recognize Black History Week. Black folk made a lot of contributions to this country. You see, the biggest problem is the people don't read, so they don't know nothing. They don't know anything. Because 500 Black folk, many of them gave their lives in the American Revolution when they frightened the British before you had a, a country, the, the, the colonists, the 13 colonists. Black people gave their lives fighting in, in, in the Revolutionary War with, with, with George Washington. One, one of the, the, the outstanding men that gave their lives was a black man. And not to think about, about Mr. Banneker, that Pre, uh, President Jackson uh, Jefferson praised him. And see what his color, what outstanding man you be in this country. He have laid out Washington, D.C. Well, why they don't want the white children to know that? Why they don't want the white children to know all the accomplishments? Now, tonight I'm going to be talking about some pictures in my office. Uh, I have my associate in my office, and she's going to show the picture in a moment. I'm going to tell you about each one of these pictures. And 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 I'm going to, the national people and local people, that I don't understand why they don't want people to, to know that, but I can tell you this right here. If they had somebody dying and needed an operation and needed a blood transfusion, they'd better pray to thank God for, 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 for Dr. Drew, the man who created the, the, black, the, the, the blood bank, Charles Drew, a black man. Now, why, why, why do white folk get no one, the white children don't know about that? Why do they know what black children don't know? If a white child was in the car with his mom and stops at a red light, see all these fine red lights changing, going this way and that way, and this arrow to this way, arrow going that way. Tell you when to go straight, when to make a left, when you make a right, etc. A black man created the red light. Garrett Morgan, a black man. Why didn't I want the white children to know about that? Why, 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 why do you want to be so racist in their thinking? They're trying to get in touch with the school board. Got the school boards. Find up in the, in the um, meeting with the school board. Trying to use... Uh, use Taxes and fear among these school board members. You don't want to learn, learn about that little young lady, Ruby. Ruby Bridges, I think her name was. Little girl, six years old. Thousands, thousands of white people whooping and hollering after her, trying to integrate the school. Took all the black children out of the schools because of one little black child. How can you be so much hate? And then they turn around and go to church on Sundays. And sing the song, Dear Long Holy Father, Mankind, Forgive Us Our Fevers and Leaves. And they know they're full of hatred. Hatred all in them. They need to change their lives, let me tell you that. One lady came all the way from Boston, Massachusetts. One white woman, retired school teacher, and taught that child in first grade. That's terrible. And uh, America is supposed to be a country uh, 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 of democracy. Yes, they did wrong. Bring the slaves in here and, and worked us for our generation of young of people over 200 and something years from 1619 to, to, to 1863 when Abraham Lincoln the Emancipation Proclamation working free, like Lincoln said, tall without, without revenue. He said himself that I would not be a slave and I would not want to hold a person a slave taking away a man's right. And then you write a Declaration of Independence. But like um, Cardi Wilson wrote in his book, all the things about what we've done and the things we need to do, why we have black history, to create dignity, awareness, and instill it on our young people about our culture, 
about our, our, our real life. Now, the Saints are down in Florida with that foolishness. I hear the man talk about being the president. Who will vote for a racist man? You know he races for you and start running for president. He won't be no president. Who wants him? Putting pressure on, on the people with the board of educations to do that type of thing. They don't want to teach black history, but you can learn about Japanese history. You can learn about German history. But don't appear to learn about black history because they want to camouflage camouflage all the dirty things that they did to, to black people right here in Georgia. State of Georgia, they lynched over 500 men. That's what they did. And the government sat down and did nothing about it to eventually somebody said we need to pass an anti-lynching law. And some people had to the say they thought to vote against it. They didn't want to have no anti-lynching law. Can you, would you believe that? Did not want to have an anti-lynching law. All you want to see lynch anybody you want to. Like they did many times. But one thing I'll never forget about President Bush in Texas when they grabbed that man, they knew him, tied him to that truck. In a hot summer day, his body, ooh, Lord, was all over the, uh, the, the, the pavement, hot, dragging him on that truck. But Bush fixed him, put him in the electric chair. That way he should have been. Nobody can help the color that you are. God made you. And he made the system so that 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 if people got together, race, I don't know about genes and genetics, all that has a lot to do with people of color and all that ge genetics. But you're made in the image of God. Every man is made in the image of God. And I don't understand people. Just like on the national scale, I don't understand why Mr. Putin is doing what he's doing. Bumming up hospitals and places where women having babies and the man is crazy. The man is crazy. Then you look the sadness of what happened in Turkey and Syria, but you're having a lot of conflicts going on there in Syria. But I just wish the, the um, earthquake had, had, had fallen on Russia, killing all these people for no reason now. Just bumming up these people because he wants to take somebody's territory. Man is something. Man is a great thing and man is something. I'm sick of him. Now, as soon as she gets ready, we're going to start talking about our pictures. I'm waiting for her to start. All right, Miss Natalie, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for you to start our picture so I can start explaining to the people. You go ahead and start talking as you talk. I'll show the picture. Keep going. I'm ready. Okay. Well, we're waiting for the picture. We're looking to show you some of the things that um, our, some, some of these outstanding people that was in our history and some of our people that are locally that worked in the civil rights struggle in Savannah. And I was uh, reading today of uh, uh, the letter that Richard showed you, the letter that Martin Luther King took from jail. While he was in the jail, he took time to write this letter because the ministers was complaining about him. And as soon as she started showing me the pictures, I'll be able to explain the one that I have in my office on my wall, which I call it the black wall. But we have so many things to be grateful for as a people. Uh, we've come along. We, there's been no race of people like black folk who couldn't learn you couldn't couldn't you, you went to jail you couldn't learn to read you couldn't do nothing and yes in all this many time we made tremendous strides great accomplishments i often think sometimes because of the racism where, where somebody who young know, some young man a young woman might have had great great potentials in science so well i don't have the money to go to college i can't go so, so i just won't do nothing who knows might have gotten school and, and invented um Medicine to do away with cancer. We don't know what the laws because of racism, segregation, and racism. I don't understand it. And we as a people, like we weren't part of the country. And I always say I cannot understand how, how in 1940s we had 48 states in this union. 48. And 35 of them would let 
13 of them dictate to them. I can understand that. I cannot understand how 35 states will allow 13 states, all of the southern states, to really keep black folk down. And everything in the north wasn't sweet, and sweet like it should have been, but it's better than the south. That's why so many black folk went north. They went north because, <clears throat> excuse me, they got, they got job better jobs. Now, we've come a long way as a people. But there's a lot of things we're going to have to do as a race of people, which I will be talking about black history more than just one month. And the reason why somebody said, well, why is it in February? Now, if you're ready now to start, well, I see um, the first picture here. I hope you all can see it. This is the picture of the, of the letter that Martin Luther King, no, Dr. King uh, wrote when he was put in, in jail in Birmingham. Now, this I'm ready. You see how long that is? It, 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 it has a, a lot of paragraphs, a lot of print there. But I've read it about four times. And I read it again today. Just refresh my mind. This he he was responding to ministers in in Birmingham who said what he was doing uh, they criticized was unwise and untimely. I can't believe that. And Birmingham was the worst, as Dr. King said in this letter that he wrote to the ministers. He was responding to ministers, people in the clergy, his ministers. He was responding to them, and and he was saying that they talked about all the laws that that was in. Birmingham, he talked about just laws and unjust, and he explained what a just law was. And the just law was when it was, it was the, it was it was a symphony with, with the moral law of God, and the unjust law was the opposite. And the unjust law broke down personalities, while just law would bring up personalities. Then he talked also about how the the oppressed fought back, and 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 the segregationists. Want to have a false sense of superiority and wanted me to have a false sense of inferiority. He always wanted the black man to be inferior, and the segregator felt that he was more in, uh, uh, in a better position than the average black man. I can't understand how they black man they work black people for nothing. Morning and noon and night, same thing. And it just took advantage of us. And Birmingham was such a terrible place. Birmingham had more bum people bumming homes, and they were never uh, arrested for such an act as that. It was terrible in Birmingham. So Dr. King, Dr. King talked about brotherhood in, in this letter to the Birmingham ministers who came out against him, and he was responding to them. That was the first picture. I want another picture. All right. That's what my one. Now let me see which one is this. Now, now this small picture here that I put on the wall, I showed that before one time. Last year I'm sure that was an old lady walking with a hoe and a big barrel of cotton. And that old lady should have been somewhere sitting down, but have her out there in the heat in that heat, picking cotton. And there she is walking with a barrel full of cotton. So that's that other one picture. All right, we move to another one. Now, all right, this picture here is an actual, it's two of them. This is one. This is an actual picture of a reproduction. A lady in New York got a gallery that she gave to Miss Gunn. Gave her two, in fact, I'm going to show you the other one in a moment. This is the actual picture, a news article that appeared in the, in the newspaper about Negroes for sale. Now, this one here, I read it from top to bottom two or three times, make sure I didn't know what to look at. But it does not say where this occurred at, but it's supposed to be, it's in Charlestown. It must sound like it's more in Virginia. And I try to reach the Chamber of Commerce, which I still will, to find out whether or not that picture it's actually a uh, newspaper article it is in Virginia. But that picture, that particular picture was one in which 250 Negroes were for sale. 
250. All right. 250 Negroes were for sale. Now, this is the other picture here. This is in, believe it or not, this is this I could read this real good, and it had where the Negroes were for sale. This is an actual reproduction of newspaper articles that appear in the newspaper during this time in the 1800s. This was in Georgia, Columbia, Georgia. Never heard of it. That's that's in Georgia. In Georgia, we have 159 counties. So it's one of them counties, Columbia, Georgia. And they had over 200 slaves they had for sale. They were advertising that you could come and purchase these slaves. Now, I like to say when I read that a lot of reading, and I didn't know this until I read that a lot of free, and we had a lot of free slaves now. They were, they were, they were given their freedoms. They, sometimes they worked and paid for it. They were given their freedom by a nice guy master. And a lot of them bought slaves. Did you know that? But some of them bought slaves, not necessarily to do the work for them, but to keep the white man from having them, with the working them like dogs. Now that's that that those two there were two slaves. Now this was coming up here now is um. Can you bring it a little closer? This is Harriet Tubman. You gotta bring it down a little bit, Harriet Tubman. All right, Harriet Tubman right here. Now she she was escaped slave in 1849 from Maryland. And she 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 escaped, and she went back. She took over two hundred slaves with her, and got hooked up with the Underground Railroad. And she would take them right on from there to, to um, Pennsylvania. Now let me say this to you: a lot of people say, "Well, why did they go to the truck? Why did they go to New York?" Why? See, in eighteen fifty, I think it was fifty. I know it was in eighteen fifties. They passed Congress passed the. Uh, the law that 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 future law that if you captured if you had a slave and you were hiding a slave you could be punished for it you could go to jail for it you could be fined for it so that was the future slave law but Harriet Tubman they put that in her mind she she went right on they had a big underground railroad that led all the way to uh, Pennsylvania and even I didn't know reading the other night on the late thing on the television they also had that was a tunnel that went from Detroit to Canada, and they're still doing a lot of uh, work trying to find out more about that tunnel. But slaves would get in that tunnel and go right underwater or whatever to, to Canada. And Harry Tubman said that slavery was the next thing to hell. And she said that uh, she was entitled to two things, liberty or death. If she couldn't have one, she would take the other. But she 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 was a spy for the Union Army. She 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 was a scout. She was she was just a great person for freedom. They once talked about putting her on a twenty dollar bill. I don't, I don't know where that is. And I say one time, um, if anybody when she gets on that twenty dollar bill now, and if you don't want that that black woman on carrying your wallet or in your pocketbook, I will tell you where to leave it. In my name at at the bank of which I tourist bank, you can leave it right there. For Grover Thornton, you don't take that money because that black woman on it whenever they do it, then I'll be glad to take it off your hand. But hopefully, they, I don't know what happened to it. It's supposed to put getting her on a twenty dollar bill. I thought it would done happen by now. I better research that and find out what the problem is. I thought they're gonna do it in, just about five, six years ago, I think. But they have not done it as of now. But she was supposed to be, I think that Jackson's on a twenty dollar bill, she gonna be he gonna be on the back, she's gonna be on the front. I think that's where they plan on doing it, but it has not occurred as of yet. So that's Harriet Tillman. All right. Uh, next one I want to talk about now is uh, coming down more to where's the one where where the man got beaten bad on the back, the first one on the end. Go down the other end. I want to show the public how this man was beaten bad. The one on the extreme end. I want the picture of the stream in, extreme in. That's it right here. That's it right here. This gentleman right here. I wish you could look at his back. Look at his back. Look at it. I don't know what he did. He might have been a recaptured slave. And that happened in Mississippi. I think it was Mississippi. 
Florida, I'm Mississippi. I think it was Mississippi when I read it. Look at his back, how they beat him to death. Terrible. I don't know what his punishment was, but he paid a price for it, his back. So slaves were mistreated. Terrible. I told you when I told you about um, Uncle Tom, Tom's cabin, how they were treated. So those are the ones that pictures I'm going to show you about in the uh, 1800s. But now let's come down to the sixes now. Talk about a lot of people right here locally. We had a lot of uh, excellent people here in this city during the civil rights struggle. And I want you to know if you were born after the sixties, uh, you don't have no idea what we went through in Savannah. But I got to say, now there's Mr. W. W. Law, who was a great leader, a great leader than Mr. Law. Um, who you have here now? All right, not right here. There's Judge Gasson, Eugene Gasson. He was the first. Judge Gasson was the first black superior court judge in Chatham County. He was one of the founders of the Political Advisory Council, which we made a lot of changes uh, with the NWCP. And I served on the board under Mr. W. Law for about 11 years. We made all these changes in Savannah. As a matter of fact, Dr. King said that Savannah was the most integrated integrated city in the South. We were the first to have more black police. The first one to have black police officers in, in, in the South, Savannah, Georgia. And he was one of the main persons that worked towards all that. And Mr. Law that was shown was also an outstanding person. I had meant to put on, did, did, I don't have a photograph of her, but I do have the actual picture of Ms. Anna Jackson being sworn in as the first female mayor of Savannah. That was historic. That was history. And I'd like to tell you that Ms. Jackson played a marvelous job during the civil rights struggle, uh, where we worked to get people out to vote. And she was on the radio, WSOK, I never shall forget it. It's right on the corner of uh, was the Anderson and Henry and, and uh, Whitaker Street. That Ms. Jackson was out standing on the radio, encouraging people to get out and vote. And that's what we did. We really got out and put the balance out for people to get out and vote because the people at that time really followed leadership. That's why we made the progress in which we did make. Uh, Judge Gazin, W.W. Law was proud of the NAACP that, that they threatened to blow up his house and all that kind of stuff. They fired him from the post office. And NAACP leadership, Mr. Wilkins, the big leaders, got back to President Ken uh, Kennedy and President Kennedy put him back on his job and had Mr. Day. Now, that's been a long time ago, and I still remember that man's name. I can't recollect his first name, but his last name was Day. He was the postmaster general, and he made some kind of statement that Mr. Long, I wouldn't have him to bring no mail to my house. He didn't even know the man. He didn't know the circumstances. And he turned around and made that statement. But I got news for you. President Kennedy made him apologize, Mr. Law, in the writing publicly and wrote the man a letter, apologize for making that type of statement. He didn't know that man. That way I won't saw this man would try to relieve himself behind a tree when he was a human being. She wouldn't let him come in this house and use the restroom. So she should have been busy with cleaning up our house or something. She business and looking out the window and reporting down to the board. And, and they wanted something on anyway because they wanted to fire him. They wanted to fire him. We're glad to fire him. But I got news for you. When they fired him, they really, President Kennedy put him right back to the post office. Right back. Uh, those, so those were people that were the leaders there. And now we're coming on down here. This is the actual picture of that I got framed on my wall when Miss Rosa Parks was arrested. She's being fingerprinted. She's being fingerprinted by the police corporal for refusing to give her a seat on the bus. Now, you know, I read about her the other day, and she said some people would have said that I was tired. She was a seamstress. Most seamstresses don't, don't, don't be standing up that much. They be sitting down the sewing machine, up and down, of course. But uh, she said people were saying, that she um, was tired on her feet. She said, no, that wasn't with no time on her feet. She said she sat because she paid a fare and she was a citizen of that, 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 that city and she had a right. And the worst thing, they wanted her to give up her seat to a man. Give her seat to a man. Can you believe that? Because they didn't respect her as a woman. That's why. You could man 40, 50 years, 60 years old, call a man boy. 
Ooh, Jesus. Those are the things that they don't want the white children to know. Those are the things. I had a photograph. Hope I could find it to show you the fountain that uh, beautiful one for white folk. Color white. I was looking at TV several months ago, and two white girls at that time were showing what happened during the sixties, and the fifth of two white girls um, were together and drinking drink water. So one was drinking out the water, say white, and the other one went and drank the water, say say color. She said, oh, "You drank out the water, say no." She said, "Well, no different." I didn't find no taste different than that one than the one you drank it on. <laughs> so that's the so of ignorance. That's all it was. Pure ignorance. Pure ignorance. Now, I'm going to talk about this one right over here. This is the tall. Stop right there. Hold it right in that first one. Now, you see this writing right here. Bring it down. Bring it down. Bring the tall one down. Cause I want you to see this rhythm right here. Seeking to bring it down to the first one. Cause that's very important. The first page. This is right. Hold it right there. You see this right here. This is on this page with Dr. King and all the marching. Now, what this writing says, you can't read it, but what it says, it talked about in 1965. Hold it right there. 1965. They're explaining. Why this march is. Now, in 1965, in Selwyn, Alabama, I, I was surprised at birthday. Nobody voted in Selwyn. There was some place in Alabama where black folk outnumber white people, and not a one person, not one person could vote. Not one person could vote. So this this right here is, is they're telling what had happened. In that April 1965, they were leading a march. Dr. King did, was not there when he first started. It was Jose Williams. Jose Williams was one of the persons, and uh, there were about 600 people. <coughs> they, they were going to do a demonstration, a march on there, and they said where they were going. And what the police saw, what the chef did, he got on the phone, and, 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 and he sent out a communique, and one of all men who were 21 years old and old report to the sheriff's office. And what he did, he deputized these people to be sheriffs. But the 65 thing was what happened. They beat them. They were almost killed one lady with, with, with tear gas. That went all over the world. The greatest country in the world, democracy. They were showing democracy now, beating these people. They're riding on the horses, hipping them with the, It's just sad to see. And um, tear gas, and they whipped those people, beat them, and they called it Bloody Sunday. And that lady picture who, who who was beaten so bad that she had put in the hospital, her picture was all over the world. Now, this is the demonstration where the people, Dr. King came back to Selman, Alabama. There he is right there. And they're marching. And also they're marching, going up to the next one. They're marching, marching on. Go, they, there they go. See them on the street marching. And what happened, President, President Johnson, Nationalize the 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 the, the, the uh, national guards to protect those people as they march. In the last picture, the last picture there is President Johnson signed the 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 the, uh, the, the Voting Rights Act in 1965, and he's given the pen that he signed the bill with to Dr. King. Now the other picture with Dr. King, I mean, th he was made his speech to the nation on on civil rights. You know, voting rights, and he told them if they if they didn't want the federal government coming in there registering people, because that's what the law would do, then open your polling places for people to vote. And he talked about the Negro and suffering and the right to vote, and we want to have our right, rightful place, and constitutional right was guaranteed us as a citizen of this nation. I I, I just can't understand it. The Fourteenth Amendment to the Constitution said all persons born or naturalized in the United States are therefore Citizens of the United States and of the states in which they reside. And no state should make any law to bridge your privileges. And they'll just sit there like they're just on a shelf. They don't care anything what the Constitution says. States' rights, states' rights. That's all the hollow all the 1800. States' rights. Yes, states' rights. The right to have slavery. And we talk about the Constitution, Grandeur, and Lyndon Johnson really laid it out. 
in that, in that 1965 address to Congress and to the nation about voting, the right to vote. And he told them, if you didn't want, if you want to keep the federal government out of your business on voting, then you open your voting poll to all the people. Otherwise, we have federal people coming and arrest the people. Take away the right to vote. The 15th Amendment to the Constitution gave you the right to vote. Even in Georgia, you could vote for the President of the United States, but you couldn't vote in Georgia. You had a white citizen primary, a Democratic primary. You couldn't vote in a Democratic primary. And to the NAACP, Thurgood Marshall, argued the case, Trevor Cope, Texas, and knocked down that, 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 that system they had with black folk. Only it gets against black people, but I can't understand. And like I said, look what that no good the Santos are trying to do. Look what he's trying to do. Take all history out of school with black children could read about the culture of black people. Now you wait until next month. The next month when I have my program. So I live with nothing happened. You tell you all the wonderful things that black folk have made and done in this country. We pay it our way. And we've been mistreated. Mistreated. You got so many e evil people in the world. And those are some of the things that uh, I want to show you these pictures that people did such a marvelous job in our nation to bring um, us so far where we are right today as, as a group of people. And as a race of people, that's what we're attempting to do, to, to, to have civil rights and justice and meet our, our rights to our children. The generation of unborn black grown children had not even been born yet. That's what we're striving to do. We're striving to make life better for them. And we have a lot to do as a bunch of people. And one of these programs, I'm going to talk about our responsibilities that we need. Uh, particularly to our young men, that, that that what we need to act as men. I now when Farrakhan had that that big million man man drive march in Washington, all these million men, he spoke to them. Uh, that's that. I'm not talking about that man religion, but I'm talking about the way he he, he spoke spoke a thing about this democracy is supposed to be, and he challenged them, but challenging men to be to be men. You have a responsibility to take care of your family. It's a man's responsibility, not the woman's responsibility. It's a man. God put a man in charge. So we, we need to step it up. We need to leave these terrible vices alone, like drugs. So many thousands of men incarcerated with that vile drugs. Terrible. And sad thing about it, sad thing about it, you had your leaders in these cities, these people in high positions, they're the ones bringing the drugs here. Poor black people, they have no airplanes, they don't have no ships. And the sad thing about it, the government knows where these drugs are coming from. And, and they won't never try to stop it. That, that, that's what got me. Look, right here in Savannah, Georgia, several years ago, it was on the television, a ton, of, I don't know how many tons of, uh, uh, marijuana, uh, crack cocaine, one of them, came on the port with nobody's name on it. And I often wonder, wonder what happened to him. Maybe the FBI got out on them for money. They're storing up our system, wrecking our young people. Never heard of such thing before. Poor black people, they do not have ships. They do not have airplanes. No kind of boats They bring no drugs in no place. Unless he's a high polluted guy that's involved with the mafia or that type thing. And strumming up their own people. Unbelievable. Now I remember uh, doing that No Good Trump place, presidency, uh, that, that President uh, Trump because of that guy, Carnell, whatever his name is, I don't have respect for him. But anyway, he pleaded with Trump to put this lady 
on probation out of prison. She was given 25 years, but she was not a little person just walking around with a little drug. She was a big kingpin. And she got out of jail. I don't know how many times she made on the 25 years, but what I look at, how many people she done ruined? How many young men killed each other by drugs that she helped spread in the community? How many men preyed on young old people that she spread in the community? Drugs. We got to get our young people away from that. You know, young men got to be more men. Got to be, and I gave him his prayer card. He had that march out and indoctrinate you all the responsibility to take responsibility of a man. You are supposed to take care of your family. Don't have no babies and run off and leave. I remember years ago when Ted Copper used to be, that's after the um, invasion of, of Iraq when he took the, pop, the, pop, uh, the hostages. And Ted Copper, he's coming at night with that, but the drugs were so, so prevalent in, in Philadelphia that he went there one night and they had a, a, a meeting. And and he was talking to this young man. All he did, he asked him, did he work? No. All he, he, he sat around half the time. And guess what? That's what his, his title was. He, his name was, uh, his, his name was, was the baby maker. That's what they called him, the baby maker. And he was telling the people, how these women would always come to get him to make babies. I don't understand it. What's wrong with some of these women? What's something wrong with some of these men, women? This man, this man pregnant you and you have a baby from him. He doesn't give you a dime. He doesn't care nothing about the child. And you go right back there and have another baby from him. You need your head examined. It's terrible. So we got a lot to do as a race of people. We've we come a long way, but we have to keep Elevating our people, our responsibility to do that. Stay away from these drugs. It's bringing you down. It's causing you nothing but, but heartaches. That's all that drug does. It destroy you. So uh, I just want to talk about that. I was trying to wait. Miss Miss Pat Gunn is supposed to be here to, to brief you on for my time is up. It's too bad if she doesn't get here. She's coming on. Just one minute. To, I'm sorry. She's coming on. She's coming on. Just one so um, I just want to thought I'd give that little lecture while Ms. Gunn come in and to talk about, um, remember sometime a couple months or so, I, I told you about the square downtown named after John Calhoun, who was a vice president, vice president in the 1800s. And he, he was a smart man. He was one of the most brilliant men in the Congress. And he said um, he was from South Carolina. And he said that slavery was a, not a bad thing, an evil. It was a positive good. I couldn't believe him. Somebody would say something like that, but that's what he said. He said slavery was a positive good. And so they, I don't know what people here in Savannah, they named a square after him. They name a square after him. So the city council finally voted nine to zero to remove the name. And uh, Ms. Pat Gunn and a few people, it was their idea. And now the, now the name has been removed. I don't know why the man, the council, didn't come and said, we're going to name the square after a period. Uh, unless there's a law that you can't do it. A law says you got to do this, you got to do that. Well, why, why, why the law was in fact, didn't, didn't try to do anything about it, it was, Named Calhoun all that time. But the fact of the matter is this. It's awful. The next step was what we, how are we going to do the name of this square after this lady? And the council has already voted to remove it. And I don't know why they didn't go right on the name it after Mr. The lady name is Susan K. Taylor. She was a woman that was uh, uh, like a nurse at the Civil War, after the Civil War. She did a lot to 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 help the union uh, forces, and we don't have a, a a square in this old city name after a, a black man, more less than a woman. We don't have none name after them. But he, but I'm glad they, they moved it from him because he was a staunch segregationist and, and, and was pro slavery. But I'm waiting for her to come. They said she was on the way here, so she could give us a briefing. 
an update on where we are. So we have a few more minutes left. So that's what we're trying to wait on her for a minute so she can give you a briefing. Because I promised you that about a month or two ago. And she was unable to give us a briefing on what's going on. Because we need to move and name, name that square after her. And all we're wondering right now, a lot of times uh, we don't we don't have a thing in this city name. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of times we forget about the thing the people done for you. That's the truth. Now, we don't have nothing in this town named after Jose Williams. And that man gave his life. He put it was put in jail on here in Savannah for about, for about a month or so, leading on demonstrations at night because I was in them. And he, and he was a great leader for Martin Luther King organization because he and two or three others, they always went ahead to prepare because he was one of the first ones they they, they, they beat on that bridge I was telling you about. That Petner's Bridge in in, 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 in uh, Alabama. They don't have nothing named after he was a leader. And I like to know why the bridge is still Herman Tavern Bridge unless they, they, they changed it. I don't remember seeing where they changed it. I still read in the paper that could somebody Tavern's Bridge. So, where is she? She's having technical problems. Huh? She's having some technical problems. Well, she was trying to get online, but we can't wait. We had a few more minutes because the time is running out. I'll give her about five more minutes. Because I sure want to let, let we want to know what the latest is on that square. Are they going to name it after her? Should be named after her. Miss Gunn and her group started it. But I don't know why some of us, we just don't have backbone. We don't. I often think if Dr. King was a person with no courage and backbone, a lot of things would not have been happening in the civil rights struggle. The man to had courage, gave his life for what he did. And I told y'all all before, like I read the book, a book I got in, I can show you, the man was saying, if anybody wanted to kill Dr. King, they could have done that while he was marching, holding hands. But when he started talking about that Vietnam War, messing with that money, that's what they were doing them. That money. They lost 3,000 helicopters. Just helicopters in Vietnam. Just helicopters. 3,000. And just imagine how one helicopter how much one helicopter costs. Not to mention all the ammunition. Not to mention the guns. Not to mention the tanks. Not to mention the airplanes. All of those, those, those mechanism things for war. Being produced. By the business community. And you see the mama, how much money was involved in that. What they cared about a war going on. What did they care about it? Well, as long as they weren't their children. Just like we won't get these assault weapons off the street. But I went to bet you let 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 that peer man who was over the um the, the National Rifle Association let somebody shoot his daughter or his son or his grandchildren. That some of them senators who would not pass these, these certain bills, let them. And that children get shot in, in the street. Then you'll get a change. Uh, they'll move the guns very quickly. Are you there, Ms. Gunn? Are you ready? Yes, I'm here. How are you, Ms. Well, I'm, 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 I'm tired, but I'm going yeah, to try. can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, Ms. Gunn, I, I was telling the, uh, the audience about that square. And it, it was an organization that you were a part of, that you and several other people took the initiative about, about, about that square, Susan King Taylor. And tell us something about Miss Taylor. I was, hello, can you hear me? And tell us something about Miss Taylor. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I want to tell the audience some things about her. I know you took the initiative, you and several other people about moving that racist man, never should have been on that square in the first place. And I want the people to know that that, 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 that Calhoun Square is a cemetery where, where, where African-American slaves are buried. So tell us something about them and why you want to do it. Tell us about Miss King. Well, you know, Susie King Taylor, uh, so Susie King Taylor is an American hero, uh, and she was born in Liberty County, 
in a place called Isle of Wight. But she came here at age seven because her grandmother was here and she was an enslaved woman. There was a 10% population of abolitionists here and her grandmother befriended them and they taught Susie King Taylor how to read, write and count. Uh, she went on to create these secret schools all downtown in the middle of slavery and you could have literally lost your life. It was absolutely against the law to read, write, or count. In fact, the only people that were allowed to read, write, and count were the blacksmith and the preachers to do the sermons on Sunday. So here was Susie King Taylor reading and teaching folks how to read in a, in a very secret way downtown. The Civil War begins in 1861 and she uh, is able to escape and uh, join the South Carolina colored troops and become the first African-American nurse in America. And so we were told by a New, Lo New York journalist that there was a burial ground down at Calhoun Square. After lots of research and verification, we had lots of historians to help us, as well as the city of Savannah's municipal archives on slavery. It is in fact true that John C. Calhoun sat on top of our ancestors. Not only Calhoun, but George Whitfield and all downtown. You're talking about over three and a half um, miles of burial ground. Just recently, they discovered bodies on Broughton and Bull Street. A worker was there, he was using a backhoe, and he found approximately a half a block of people wrapped in cheesecloth. I was contacted and I told them those are enslaved people. They did not bury us with caskets. They buried us wrapped in cheesecloth and put us six feet deep. And so we are beginning to discover all of these burials downtown. Susie King Taylor needs to be on the square that we have finally removed uh, from Calhoun Square. So John C. Calhoun's name was removed on November the 10th unanimously voted by the mayor and city council. And our next hope and prayer and lobbying effort is to rename that square as Susie King Taylor Square. You're not really talking about a renaming now. It's an unnamed square that makes it a brand new square according to the city. And so we want that brand new square to be for the first woman and the first African-American woman in Savannah. We have 22 squares, Mr. Thornton and all of them are men. So now we have 21 men and one unnamed, and we think that she is an American Shiro. We want people to say her name. We want her name to become a household name. Can you imagine taking care of the colored troops as a nurse? Remember now, the Civil War was the bloodiest war ever. Therefore, it was impossible for her to treat white soldiers. And so I want you to know that Susie King Taylor matters and she has earned the right to be in a public square. And so we want people to help us to contact the mayor's office and tell them, say her name, Susie King Taylor. She's so deserving of being in that public square. It's located in the 400 block of Abercorn Street, waiting for her name to go there. I can see it now well, in the, the middle of that square. Yes, the question sir. I the question I want to ask you is, uh, in your judgment, oh, oh, oh. Okay, here, you said twenty two squares. We don't. You say not a, no African man. You don't have no men name, no women or men name on any of the squares. So that was your. I was talking to a friend of mine, and uh, he was knowing the community real well, and I was talking with him about the square about a week or two ago, and he said, "Well, that was your idea, along with these other people who who, who thought about pushing this this project." So why why they don't want to come out and just go in and in? What's the hold up? Do we need to demonstrate? Do we, do we need to put people together and, and put a march on, on the city council? I, At least they voted I, to remove have, the man. So why, why they can't go to the next step and name the thing after the woman? What's the hold up? If you hadn't taken initiative, that's where it would yeah, still be I that John no John, John the, uh, the city officials, uh, Mayor Johnson said he wanted to. Come on, let's just be truthful. They wanted to create a process, you know, and the process uh, has not been released to us. So while we're waiting for the process, we have started a citywide campaign 
called Say Her Name, Susie King Taylor. And we want people to begin to call the city and say that we think that this uh, name should be Susie King Taylor. So that's what we're waiting for. The hope was that we would get John C. Calhoun's name removed. And then the next motion would be a motion to uh, put her on that square. If that didn't happen. He wants to take it around from community to community. I, I think that's what he said. And so we'll wait for the process. It's taken us two and a half years. Uh, we are the coalition to rename Calhoun Square. Now that that's done, we're now the coalition coalition to name it Susie King Taylor Square. Well, so this out. is phase two. We're not giving up. We're going to uh, push to ask the council and the mayor to name that square in honor of our beloved Susie King Taylor, who, as a matter of fact, if we have a hundred plus places around the nation that have honored her, then so be it, Savannah. We have uh, every honor and opportunity here to honor this daughter of the soil of Savannah. Absolutely. And you said she was born right here in Georgia, is that right? She was born right here in Georgia. Did you hear me? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. You said she was born here in Georgia, right? Say that again, Mr. Thornton. She was born, born. She yeah, was born. she was born in Liberty County in a yeah. place called Isle of Wight. Yeah, that was saying born that's in less than an hour's drive from Savannah, but she yeah. came to Savannah to live with her grandmother. I know that, but I'm seven. saying. So, yeah, she's a native of Georgia. She's a native of Georgia. That's what I'm saying. And Savannah. And how, how can people reach you if they want to talk with you about it? What was your... Yeah. People want to contact you. How can they contact you? Uh, they can contact me at my phone number. It's 912... 547-5937. Uh, they can contact the coalition at that number, and we'll be glad to uh, give you information. We also have a citywide petition on our website. It's www.centerforjubilee.org. Centerforjubilee.org, and you'll see the petition. Please sign it. What we want to do is to give it to the mayor and the city to let them know that the citizens are engaged and they want this public square to start getting some equity. We need some women on the squares. Very good. Well, I, I, I promised the people before I bring this program to a close, I promised the people a couple of months ago that I'll have you on here to give us an update uh, on, the, on the situation with that square. And it's offered that a man of that type was even, that, that's a, a, a cemetery and a racist man saying that Slavery was not an evil, but it was a positive good. Unbelievable. And to keep the thing, I always say when I read these things, I say these things because they kept saying America was a democracy, Absolutely. land of the free. Well, you we know what that is. Right now, the man doesn't even want to have, have uh, black children and white children learn about the history, but just learn about the history of other races, but not about the black race. But I would like to say before I close that I will next show, I will be having... Um, a lot of the things that black folk have created and done and in, inventions and all, you'll be surprised when I do tell you personally what these things are. But I want to take this time to thank Miss Gunn for coming by. And I want to tell you, I thank you for listening to this show. And I do my best to try to keep you informed. And if you want to contact me on for anything, is this 912-925-1034. And I'd be glad to, to answer any of your questions. Or if you have a question that you want me to uh, bring to the audience, get response, I'd be glad to do that. So I want to take this opportunity. Thank you for listening to the show. And I hope that I've been able to impart some good to you and our community. Thank you very much. And have a good night.
I like that.